I would like to greet our online visitors as well as our radio broadcast by saying grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. If you could all please stand. I would like to introduce the pastor and founder, Archbishop Keith T. Jenkins. Give him a hand. Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand. We're here celebrating. Come on, help me celebrate him one more time. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. One more time, help me lift up Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your manifold blessings unto us. Lord, we stop and pause. Lift our eyes toward heaven and recognize that without you, we can do nothing. Remember your servant now. Touch his mind and give him clarity of thought. Touch his lips and give him precision of expression. Touch his body, give him the strength to preach your word. Above all, Master, anoint him, for it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Bend this will that it be submissive to your will. Make this spirit true to the hermeneutics of the text. Lord, help us to build a bridge from this ancient book to those that are sitting here today. Let there be an alarm sound for sinners. Lord, when this exercise is over, we promise to give you all the credit and glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. If you have your Bibles, this has been a, a fun, exciting day all day today. I want to take a few minutes, a few minutes to get into the Word of God because we have a lot to do. We have to do communion. We have a baptism, which is wonderful. But I wanna give you 10 or 15 minutes of the word today. And for those who are tuning in now and just signing on, we have already had lots of church before we came on the air in-house. Some things is for family. And this is for the word of the Lord. So if we'll, it's not as long as we've generally be. It's because we have already had church and had a lot of great things happening before we came on the air. I'm of the school of thought. We don't need to put everything on the air. It's too much already on the air. Today we're going to be talking about uh, being living generously, living a generous life. And there's a text in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 through 11. We're going to read that text. We're also going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 to 13. Exodus 25, 1 through 3. 2 Chronicles 31, 2 through 12. Now that's enough Bible to keep us occupied all Sunday afternoon. But I think it's good, there's, there's something about reading the word of God in the atmosphere. And it's something about hearing it. And I'm not going to uh, prolong the text. I'm just going to read it. And as the Spirit of God quickened me, we'll highlight certain things. But there is something that I, I believe God wants all of us to know, and those of you who are watching as well, that God is a, what we call a, in theology a holistic God. That means that God is concerned about our whole body, soul, and spirit. God is concerned about our health. God is concerned about our spiritual well-being. God is concerned about our psychological well-being. God is concerned about our physical well-being. And God is a God of principle. He's a principle God. He's a God of order. And God operates by principles, by order, by law or by his word. And God is bound by his word. That's why when you hear a bunch of people that say God is always saying this to them, don't believe that. Because when God says something, he's obligated by his word. He's bound by his word 
to do it. So God is not going to do a lot of loose talking because then he's bound to do all that. So that's why he's slow sometimes to speak because if God makes a promise, God is bound by his word. He said, am I a God that I, I, I'm a God that I cannot lie. Have I not spoken it? Won't I bring it to pass? Not one jot or one tittle of God's word will fall to the ground. God would watch over it to bring it to pass. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could do anything, I want to turn your faith toward God and have in child challenge you to trust God like never before. I don't care if it's relational. I don't care if it's health wise. If it's something you're trying to get the victory over in your life, trust God that he has the power to get it done. Amen. There's nothing impossible for God. The question is, is there anything too hard for God? Absolutely no. God can do anything but fail. And so today I want to talk to you about living generously with your time, with your talent, and with your treasures. You need to be generous with God. You need to be generous. And the way to be generous with God is to be generous toward people. You see, you can say you're generous with God, you can't see God, that you're getting off easy. But when you start being generous with people because God loves his people and the people are the body of Christ, he's the head, we're the body. So whatever you do for the people of God, you're doing it for God. Amen. Amen. So live generously because you can't beat God giving. Now, how many of you are Bible students and you love the word? I remember when I first got saved when I was 18 and it was a pious thing for say, I'm a word. I want the word. And people just, I mean, I thought I need to learn the word. So I went back to Bible college and I went to seminary and them same folks said, well, you don't have to do that. I said, well, I thought you want me to learn the word. <laughs> I'm telling you. But anyway, God is good. So I'm going to give you the word today and I'm going to give you the word and I'm not trying to get nothing from you. I'm trying to get something to you. I'm trying to get you to learn to live generously. At first, it looked like you're being taken advantage of. And sometimes you do get taken advantage of. But we got a God to know how to repay you, even if the devil tried to take advantage of you. God can repay you. Whatever the devil stole, he'll make him bring it back sevenfold. Amen. Even if you help somebody and they turn their back on you, don't get all down and out about it. God got folks could come and help you that you don't even know anything about. If people that used to pray for, but now you need prayer, but won't nobody call you, that's all right. God got prayer warriors everywhere. They are coming, they'll pray for you. Learn, this is something every day I try to tell myself because I'm trying to program. You know, you can program yourself and I'm trying to program myself every day. I'm not taking nothing personal. Even if somebody say something negative about you, just say, that's your problem, it's not mine. I mean, you don't want, I don't, don't take it personal because that poison emotion the minute you accept it comes into you and that poison emotion when you believe what people are saying and all caught up then you become toxic and then you become all like a volcano because they has transferred that evil poison that they're spewing it has come into your spirit and now you 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 all messed up it's like a little boat on the ocean all that water out there, but if you don't let that water get in that boat, you can float. But the minute the water gets in the boat, the boat sinks. If you let what people are doing and saying get in your spirit, you're going to go down. You can't do that. If somebody walk up and say, I don't even like you, don't even take it personal. Let me tell you why. They don't know you. So you know they're talking from their perspective and they're wrestling with their issues and just say, that's you. Even if somebody say what you say hurt me, it's, you, it's really not what you're saying that hurting a person. What I found out, the person has wounds and what you said touched a wound. You didn't hurt them. They got wounds that they haven't let God heal. And what you said touched a wound and they react from it. It, what they said didn't hurt them. They got wounds. And the word of God said he sent his word that he may heal you. So if you got a bunch of wounds in your life and somebody say something, you get hurt. All, the person, what they said didn't hurt you. It's that you got a bunch of wounds and what the person said touched the wound in your life. It will free you up when you know who you are. You don't need people to tell you who you are. You know who you are. I know who I am. Don't y'all sing that more, those song praise team. Don't sing that no more. I know who I am. I know who I, don't sing that if you don't know who you are. 
I know what I am. So whatever you call me, I'm not going to get mad at that. I know what I am and who I am and what I'm doing. That's your issue. So you have the issue. And I'm going to keep serving God. You stay free. You stay free. But I want to talk to you about being a generous person. At the end of it all, you're going to be blessed and prosperous. At the end of it all, if you can trust the word, how many believe God's word? All right, let's get into the word. Let me get out of here. Isaiah 55, verse 8 through 11. Here's a wonderful text. Let's read together. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways. Saith the Lord. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my words higher than you. So are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So God. Think something, you think in something. So God is different from you. So your words and your thoughts is not the end of it at all. That's just your thoughts. Verse 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth bud, that it may give seed, God will give you seed if you are a sower. My point. And he would give bread to the eater. How many believe God? If you're a generous person and you have a desire to bless, it always just, it just strikes me as odd. People who are flat broke will come up, Bishop, I get enough money, I'm going to pay the whole church off. Well, you ain't got no money. But the minute God bless you, you don't talk like that. But God will give you seed. To sow. Verse 13, 11, I'm sorry, verse 11. So my word be that goeth forth out of my, listen to God, it shall not return unto me empty, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. That's God. God said, My word, if I said it, it'll come to pass. If I say I'm going to bless you, I'm going to do it. And there's nothing nobody can do. No committee can pray about it and hold you up. Nobody can touch together and agree. When God chooses to bless you, your enemies can't do nothing but bless you. Somebody help me praise him here. The text says he give bread to the sower. Well, if you're not a sower, he may not give you bread a seed. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through 13. I'm trying to hurry. I only got six minutes. Let's read. And God is able. Who? God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always having all sufficiency and you always have what you need. May abound in every good work. Verse 9, read class. As it is written, he has dispersed, God has dispersed his blessings abroad. He hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Verse 10, all of it together. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread that sounds kind of like Isaiah, right? He gives seed to the so he he that he that he, he that ministers seed to the sower give bread and food and multiply your seed sown and increase your fruit of your. How many believe the Bible? Lord, help me today. I'm trying to hurry. Verse eleven. What is that? Being enriched in everything. You got joy. Hold it. Some people just got joy. Some people got happiness. Happiness is external. Joy is internal. Happiness is when everything is just right. You got the car. You got the house. Everything. But many stuff go wrong. You're not happy. Joy. You can have joy when everything is going wrong. Joy comes from within you. So your world can be going through a test, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
But you ain't gonna have no happiness until you get everything lined up like all the stars got to line up. And people are looking for happiness everywhere you go. But you need joy and joy comes from God living inside of you. The Bible said with joy do we draw waters from the wells of salvation. Joy is on the inside even though when things are going wrong I got joy. I got so some people just got happiness and they're glad but they're not happy in some areas in life but God wants to enrich you to be full in everything. Peace, joy, happiness, going to sleep, you're not up all night. God wants you to be blessed. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness which, cause, which causes through us thanksgiving. In, in other words, it causes you to want to say glory to God in the highest. Nobody like my God. I don't know another God like him. I'm not going to trade Jesus in for nothing. Jesus is enough for me. I give God all the glory. Look what the Lord has done. Glory be to God for his goodness unto me. I, every time I turn around, he keep on doing great things for me. I'm so blessed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> Let me rush. So, 2 Chronicles 31, verse 2 through 12, and I think this is the last text I'm going to give you, and then we're going we're gonna, to uh, bless the communion, and then we're going to uh, do baptism, and we'll see you next week going home. All right, and Hezekiah appointed, let's read class, the courses of the priests and the Levites after their course every man according to his service, and the priests and the Levites for burnt offerings and the peace offerings and to minister and to give thanks and praise in the gates of the tents of the Lord. Verse number three. He appointed also the king's portion of his substance for the burnt offering, to wit, for the morning and the evening burnt offering and burnt offerings for the Sabbath and for the new moon, and for the set feast, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Verse 4. Moreover, he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and the Levites, that they might be encouraged. Translation. He said, I want you to bless the house of God and the men of God who are preaching to you every day, so they can be encouraged. So they're not going home wondering how I'm going to pay my lights. Whether I got gas. What are we going to eat this week? And they have ministered to you all week. I'm not talking about you because you do good. But that's what it's saying there. So they can be encouraged in the Lord. Verse 5. Look at the text. And as soon as the commandment came abroad. Watch it. They heard the commandment, right? The children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruit of corn, wine, oil, and honey, and of all of the increases of the field, and the tithe of all the things bought they in how? When the word of the Lord came, the people responded. That's what I want you to see. When they came, God said, I want my ministers in the house of God to be blessed and encouraged. And when Israel heard it, they start giving. And six months later, they, he said, wait a minute, stop. You don't have to give anymore. Listen, verse 6. And concerning the children of Israel and Judah, means praise, that dwelled in the cities of Judah, they also bought in the what? Of the oxen of the sheep and the tithe of holy things which were consecrated unto the Lord their God and laid them by what? There were big heaps standing out there. People like, whoa, look at this. When they heard the word of God, the people responded. I'm talking about living generously. You don't sit there and hear the word and say you love God and hear the word and then look at it like it's in Chinese. Whenever we hear God's word in any fashion, God, when he's done talking, is requires a response. If God is preaching and talking to you about salvation and he done laid it all out and blah, 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 at the end he expects you to respond. Whenever God talks, he don't talk for you just to say, I'm bored. I have nothing to do. I just want to talk with you. 
No. God is going to tell you something about how to get from point A to point B, or what's holding you back, or what's going on inside of you, or what's happening in your house, or what your children are doing, or what you need to do. Or how, what. God is talking to get you to where you need to be. He's not just talking because he's bored. So anytime you hear the word and you understand it, then you have to respond. Thank you for them two or three amens. So the word of the Lord came and the people heard the word and they responded. Now, the oldest profession in the world, I'm not talking about that one. <laughs> I'm not talking about that one that you thought about. I'm talking about farming, agriculture, <coughs> Adam and Eve, from the beginning, all the way through the Bible, God talks in terms of farming, sowing, reaping, planting, receiving a crop. Even with souls, he said, the harvest is ready, but where are the laborers? So it's in the language of agriculture, it's in the language of sowing and wheat. Even your stock market, every week, it's, it's about what you sow in the stock and how it reap at the end of the day. It's everything is sowing and reaping. You came here because a seed was sown and nine months later you came. Your whole life is on sowing and reaping. Everything you do, you, you give a word and you may get an argument back. It depends on what you're sowing. Everything has this law on sowing and reaping. And the man in the, in the world got the revelation and said, nothing from nothing. I don't care about the rest of it. <laughs> and that's a true statement. You can't just shout and scream and run and speak in tongues and expect God to bless you like you want to be blessed. I know that's anti-Pentecostalism, but it's the truth. You want me to tell you the truth? Or you want me to placate you? If you want God to bless you according to the word of God, you got to be a sower. You got to be a giver. And he gives you seed. You can eat it. You can vacation on it. You can buy clothes with it. Or you can eat it. Whatever you do is your prerogative. But God gives seed to the sower. Yes. 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 I want to plant my seed because next year is coming. And the writer says in the book of Solomon, the preacher says, go to an ant. In the summer, the ant is working, pulling bread and pulling. You say, why don't he go to the beach? And why don't the ant go and enjoy? Why don't he get a bathing suit? The ant is working and the ant is working because the ant knows winter is coming. And when winter comes, the ant is in his house eating food and the grasshopper that's been singing and jumping and singing and chirping all summer, the grasshopper dies. Because it didn't say nothing. That's in your Bible. That's in Proverbs. That's in Song of Solomon. But let me finish. I done talked too much already. And concerning the children of Israel of Judah that dwelled in the cities of Judah, they also bought in the tithes and oxen and sheep and the tithe of holy things which were consecrated unto the Lord their God and laid them up in heaps. Seven, verse seven, hurry up. And in the third month, they began to lay the foundation of the heaps. Third month. And finished them in the seventh month. So they did this for seven months. Boom. Just, you got to imagine. Corn, chicken, sheep, just stuff everywhere. Verse eight. And when Hezekiah and the prince came and saw all of that, they blessed the Lord. Everybody got blessed. God got blessed, and the people were blessed. Giving is just the right thing to do. Verse nine, I'm almost done. Verse nine, watch it, what it say? And Hezekiah questioned the priest and the Levites concerning all of this surplus. Verse 10, and, he and Ezariah, the chief priest of the house of Zadok answered him and said, what did he say? Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house, where? 
we have had enough to eat and have left plenty and for the Lord had blessed his people and that which you see left is this overflow. You heard this morning how God has blessed his people. God has blessed Dr. McGee and God has blessed Dr. Dupree and God has blessed yours truly. And, 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 and so God has blessed us and then you still have enough. So you know, don't act like they've taken your last penny. They, they take it all that money, don't lie like that. Cause you got money you got set aside just to go to the store and just to go out and shop. You got money to do what you want to do. But if God has given you a seed, you better take that seed and plant that seed. You heard the testimony, got more money than I never had. You need to say, what caused that? As the pastor, I can testify. He blessed the house of God. Then he blessed the house again. I'm like, what? No, man, you don't have to do that. I'm like, you don't have to. He said, no, I just want to be a blessing. Why? Because God has blessed his people. And that which is left is this great store. Verse 11. Lord, help me, Jesus. Read on. Y'all reading with me? And Hezekiah commanded to prepare chambers in the house of the Lord. Uh huh. And they prepared them. Read. Next verse. I'm going to tear this mic up. Take it. <laughs> Read the Bible. What it say? And brought in the offering and the tithe. And they dedicated things faithfully. How did they do it? When will they do it? They said, when will he come through? In it every time. You know how we sing them songs. Beautiful. God is faithful to folks who are faithful to him. That's where I get it from. I'm not obligated to folks who are not obligated to me. It's just goodness that I do that with other folk. But Jesus don't do that. Membership has privileges. You can't go to Sam Club because you see everybody else going into Sam. You got to show your membership card. Then if you got your card, you got to pay your dues. Yes, you got a card, but can't get in. You can't go to Costco because you said that somebody else went to Costco. You got to be a member. When you're flying and you want to go to one of those one lounges and hang out until your next flight comes, you can't go there. You have to sit on them hard seats until you, unless you're a member. <laughs> Membership has its privileges. That's why everybody should be in a church. Belong to a church. And be faithful in that place. The people did this faithfully. That's the operative word there. They did it faithfully. Over which Kornoi, the Levite, was ruler. And Shemael, his brother, was next in line. So somebody was watching what you were doing. Somebody saw that you had, they checked the records. Brother Junebug, he hadn't given but $2 since last January, July. Now he's requesting us to pay his rent. Then we say, do we want to be merciful? But we're certainly not obligated. Why? Because Junebug has not trusted God. Because God gives seed to the sower. And he give bread to the eater. Now you can eat it up, dress it up, do whatever you want, but you take that seed belong to God. And once you do that, God blesses his people. And he blessed the house of God. It's never the will of God to have rummage sales at church. Old worn out, tore up, stinky clothes, you're trying to sell them to raise money for God. That's not God's way. 
and God, all this cooking food and stuff running all over the plate, you're running dinners all over town. That's not God's way to take care of no church. That's a bad representation of God. Slices of cake and jumping on hopscotch trying to raise money. Foolishness. That's because the people do not honor God and does not give to God. That's why they do that mess. And so the church got to go to all these gadgets and raffles trying to keep God's lights on. Because the members don't give. How much money can you raise washing a car? No more than $200. What can $200 do in this day? You need God to bless us. That stuff come from stingy people who don't want to give. But they don't mind coming to the church now. I'm like, well, what do you think I got money from? Let not make you mad here. But y'all, we don't talk about this always, but it got to be a t- I got to be a full gospel church. And everywhere I go, I'm going back over to my friends over in South Africa. They were saying to me, God is my witness. We need you to teach on. I felt so bad. I felt like this is what they want me to teach on giving. And, you know, I want to hear from God and preach what he tells me to give. I don't want to preach what people tell me to give. They said, well, we need to be taught how to give. That's, this is what they were telling me. Even then we need to talk. People don't give any talk to give. I said, well, I'll come back over and we'll, we'll talk on that now. But I'm saying, like, well, what do you want me to say? I began to preach a message I felt God wanted me to say because I was feeling the tension. And an elderly man came up to me and said, God showed me something. I'm going to tell the church a dream, how the word bless. Bishop got a call the next morning, said, man, so I'm going to tap into that anointing. And God blessed him with something happening in his life. So God confirmed the word. But I didn't want to teach on that because they, they struggling and they feel like they had a need. But I'm going to go back with a purpose and try to talk to him about how you honor God. It doesn't matter if you're in Africa. It doesn't matter where you are. The word is true wherever you work. If it doesn't work everywhere, then we got the wrong word. So I just want to say to you, church, you are a blessing. You are a giving church. Thank God for you. Some of you. But some of you know you can do more. But can you go to heaven without giving? Of course you can. You can go to heaven and don't tithe. I'm not saying you can't be saved if you don't tie it. Yeah, you can be saved, but man, between nine rapture time, you may have to be eat standing with somebody. You may, have to, you may have to go down into the soup kitchen or something, you know, because you will be saved, but you won't be at your best. Father, I thank you for blessing us to be a, a charitable place, a giving place. But the word never gets old. The word never gets worn out. It's living. Today in this house, among the people here, it's kind of like that miracle you did with the apostles on the boat. It wasn't for the multitude, it was for your your people. Today, Lord, we heard testimony. And we saw that you did great things for what you're doing in this place. You want your people blessed. And I thank you for that. Help us to live a generous life. And help us, Lord, not to be so concerned with what everybody else is doing. But make sure we're planting seeds. For the word of God says we can make our own way prosperous by taking heed to your word. We don't have to be jealous of anybody. We don't have to compete with nobody. We just got to do what you're telling us to do. And you can bless us. Amen.